And we're live. Hey. Nice. Great. Good. Hey. Uh, no intro topic this week because our guest would never wouldn't jump in. So we have to quickly say this is the top down perspective, and I'm Sean Booker. Paul Fleck. I'm John Wheeler. And I'm Jake. <laughs> there we go. That's Jake. You sound uh, very Jake, unsure. I think I'm Jake. I was You're on sure the right I'm podcast. <laughs> Uh, Jake, uh, thank you for joining us. Jake's a friend of mine that I, I brought on the show this week uh, to talk about the latest and greatest video games. Uh, Jake, give everyone the elevator pitch uh, if they oh. don't follow you on Twitter. Uh, okay. Well, first of all, thank you guys for having me. I'm excited to talk about video games. I feel like it's been a while, so I might have to uh, shake the rust off a little bit. Uh, but I was a video producer at GameSpot for about six years. I did a lot of videos about mods. That was kind of my niche or thing there, I would say, uh, as well as some other stuff. I hosted GameSpot After Dark, which was GameSpot's podcast. Still is, still going. Um, but yeah, I, I left recently just because I'd been there so long and I wanted to, uh, I don't know, try something else. So, nice. so yeah, I've still been playing lots of games, though. Still Good. playing lots of games. Well, oddly enough, that's not even a prerequisite to be on this show, but I'm glad to hear oh, really? <laughs> um, Yeah. Anyway, John, I want to hear an update from you. You got your first vaccination. Mm-hmm. Jake, if you don't know, the other two guys live in Canada uh, where the vaccination situation sucks. That's what I've heard. But, uh, I heard it's a bit tougher. Yeah. How how you feeling, John? Tired. What was the, what was, like, a, the appointment setup situation for you guys, like, up there? Uh... It was like an abandoned, like, what hardware store? Yeah, so it was like an abandoned hardware store. They like turned a into a, a <laughs> yeah, they turned it into a, uh, uh, the shot place. Uh, bunch Is of that what the sign said at the abandoned written on yeah, the cardboard. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hey, kids, written you want blood. some vaccines? I got some vaccines in the back. <laughs> got your drugs right here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I uh, walked in. There's just a bunch of cues. They uh, they get you to show your uh, appointment card. They get you to show that you actually um, what's the word I'm looking for that you don't have any COVID stuff. There's like a test you could fill out before you showed up there. So we did that. Then they took our uh, Alberta healthcare card. Then they took our ID, confirmed we were who we said we were, put us in another queue. And during that queue, they had someone come up and be like, "All right, here's all the here's what you're getting." Here's uh, the recommendation for like possible side effects. We're going to keep you here for 15 minutes after your shot, just in case any immediate side effects happen. And then after that, you're free to go. How long, how long, like did that whole process take you? Uh, our appointment was at one fifty. We showed up five minutes early and we left uh, at three ten. So we left, showed up at one forty five and left at three ten. So an hour and a That's half longer than I expected. Yeah. But here's the thing. Reese and I were on in two different groups, so uh, I had to wait for her. One my my shot was almost immediately, and hers had to. No, no, she wasn't placebo, <laughs> thank God. <laughs> but uh, it was like I got my shot, waited my 15 minutes, and she was still 15 minutes away from getting her shot because she was oh. just in a different queue line. So half of that was just the fact that we weren't synced up. Right on. Did you have like a wave of relief? That's what I did after my first shot. Uh, a little bit, but also like I felt it crawling up my neck, for lack of a better term. So I'm like, oh, I would feel more relieved if I didn't feel my body fighting this off. <laughs> oh, weird. Okay. Yeah. I got the Johnson and Johnson, so I only had one shot. But man, it put me on my ass the next two days. I couldn't get out of bed the following day. It was oh, really rough. Yeah, yeah it was, I've heard. It was I've heard rough. stories. I got yeah, a... Pfizer, so apparently the yeah, first I... one will be fine. The second one will be the the one that knocks me out. Yeah. I was lucky enough. Pfizer, no side effects ever. Dang. So, yeah. Downside to our setup, Paul, I don't know if you've gotten your shot yet. Next week. Or any shots. Okay. Uh, so they told us the wait time for your second appointment is going to be anywhere mm -hmm. from one month to four. To four, yeah. Yeah, no, it's going to be four. Like, I, my mom is uh, is vaccinating people. It's 112 days. Yeah, that, Jeez, that checks just, out. That's crazy <laughs> to think about. They're um, like, yeah, you'll you'll hear your first call. The earliest you'll hear it is like 28 days from now. Like, they're, they're like adamant, like, you're not going to hear it sooner. I'd be surprised if it was even 28 days. So, yeah. All right. Well, hey, congrats. I uh, hope you have a little bit more peace of mind. Paul, you must be excited for next week then. Sure. I'll be more excited when the second, when I know the second one's even coming. So, hey. sure. yep. Yep. Um, 
All right, and uh, and John, one last thing before we get to the show, you have you did some like cool job stuff. I don't know if you want to talk about the boots thing. Sure. Uh, join a new YouTube group uh, this week. I'm a member of Normal Boots now, so I got my buddies, uh, the Completionist, Peanut Butter Gamer, Digital Gaming. Uh, I joined their group alongside, uh, obviously myself, Chad Tronic, and Lady Pelvic. So the six of us are going to be doing uh, content on and off uh, together for the next foreseeable future. Nice. That'll so I'm excited cool. about that. Job. Paul, what's been new with you? Just working, man. You know how it is. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. Well, on that note, let's uh, talk about some video games. Uh, that's why we're here. Um, Jake, you're not allowed to talk about your day. I'm sorry. <laughs> Jake, <laughs> something cool happened I, in your day? I, 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 I don't have a job, so I like do literally nothing but play video games. So you just wait until the video the game section. <laughs> Perfect. Um, well, let's start with you as the as the guest, and you're playing the hot new thing. But which one do you want to talk about first? You have a couple things here. Uh, I mean, I, I I need to talk about Mass Effect because I haven't been able to talk about Mass Effect much at all. Hell uh, yeah. I I finished Mass Effect one the other day, rolled right on to two, like right away. The, uh, got and all the comic books right here. Damn, I gotta read those comic books. I gotta read yeah. the books. I gotta read the comic books. I gotta see. I the... read the books as the well. The books are good. Yeah. Yeah, I read Three the first the one. Good. The sure. fourth one is terrible. <laughs> sure. <laughs> one day I'll read them. But yeah, I, I finished Mass Effect one pretty quickly, and then moved right on to Mass Effect two. And the jumping quality is insane. As much as I love Mass Effect one for. The way it set the stage and laid the groundwork for that series, too, is just, it, you can tell it really shines. But I've been playing on Insanity, which was a mistake, uh, because okay. it is fucking hard. I hard. forgot how hard it was. I did it when I was younger, but I guess my reflexes and patience <laughs> was a lot better. My resolve was much stronger <laughs> back then. Uh, it, it's, it's a challenge. Every enemy is a bullet sponge. You really have to use your abilities. And you have to make sure your squad members don't use abilities. There's like a setting where you can turn it off because if you let them use abilities, they just waste them all. Oh but yeah. It... Okay. I'm glad to hear there's a jump in quality because I'm just I'm playing one at the moment, and the human faces look terrible. There's this yeah, one guy. Pretty rough. He's like the first guy you can talk to when you start the game. I forget his name. He's like a navigator or something. He looks like he has like gravel in his mouth when he's talking to you the whole time. I don't get what it's <laughs> going on. Um I think my shepherd looks ugly too like but then but then you know garris shows up and it's like hell yeah right. yeah this yeah that's that's the thing with like the character creation in those games is that they never looked good even with this the new like improvements i still think my shepherd looks wrong i don't i can't put my yeah. finger on it just like certain angles or the light hits shepherd a certain way and i'm like oh i don't know how i ended up with that face yeah yeah i kind of wish you could just change it ever and at any point because yeah a lot of times i'm just like my mouth's too big. I hate this. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Um, it's nice. It's nice being back, though. Uh, I I really like Mass Effect. I uh, and lucky it, for me, I is. played. I actually played two first. Back in the day, where I didn't like one, and I bounced off of it, and then I went back to it after falling in love with two. So two is actually the one that I've had the most time away from. So I'm okay. very excited to play two again, when I when I do get to that. Yeah, that's interesting because I I have some friends who never played Mass Effect, and I'm trying to get them to pick up this trilogy and play it. Uh, but I I told them not to play one, start with two, and then if you end up really liking two, just just play three, and then maybe go back and play one, just because okay. it can be rough, even with those improvements. Like I, I don't know, I, I feel like it's just not a very good first impression if you've never played Mass Effect before. Yeah, as much as I, I love I that agree. game. Yeah, I think a lot of like I'm enjoying my time, but it's a lot of like, oh, I know what's to come. I know I'm going to really like this character. It is just kind of janky. And also, I don't think it looks particularly great. It does kind of just look like a last gen game that they prettied up. But I'm just putting a that... note in here. I screwed up and stopped my recording for a second. Sorry about that. <laughs> OK, thanks. sorry. I got I got a message just then. Sorry, I was trying to. No, yeah, it's fine. Um. I, I'm enjoying it quite a bit. I wish they had the multiplayer from three. I liked that quite a bit. Yeah, I did too. I played a lot of that multiplayer. I didn't realize how much I played of it until I was, I loaded it up and I was like, wow, I unlocked way too much shit in this mode. It was like the first time I, I purchased a microtransaction. No yeah. I came across it. So a bunch of loot boxes. That was like the first EA game with loot boxes. Yep. Yep. Paul, I know you're a big mass effect fan, but you're not playing it. Are you waiting for something? 
Uh, yeah, to be done playing all the new stuff I want to play first before okay. revisiting 120 hours of a game that I already know I love. <laughs> makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense for sure. For sure. That's and it. John, I know at one point in the past you said maybe this is the time to like get involved. Do you think you're actually going to do that? Okay, uh, so looks like for yes. the audio listeners, you do have a copy of it, but you own a lot of games that you don't play, so that doesn't mean anything. Also, you're muted. <laughs> <laughs> I'm off. I'm off today. I'm telling you, man. I, that Neil's actually messed me up more than I thought. Uh, yeah, so I bought it, but I don't know if that's uh, going to actually mean I play it. But yep. uh, it's it's a step forward, other than not. Okay. Those games are so good, but man, it is a commitment. <laughs> like, and it sucks you in pretty quickly, though, which is kind of nice. It you lose track of time real easy in that game, so it's a little scary. <laughs> yeah, especially with two. With one, I kind of like my internal clock after I played like an hour to be like, all right, it's time to take a break. But with two, the way that game is paced, it's just like. All right, one more, one more loyalty mission, one more, one more recruitment, and it just keeps going and going and going, and then I'm up till three a.m. playing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Weird. One little weird fact I noticed. Um, on so I'm playing on the Xbox Series X version, and they they recently had a dashboard update where they will now tell you which games are being held for quick resume. And Mass Effect is one of the games that Quick Resume works well with, as a because uh, I've had a lot of, of those games kind of not work for whatever reason. But mm -hmm. it does not show up in the list. Weird. Huh. So you have to just kind of hope, and then it's like, oh, okay, good, it, it is working. But it won't, sh it, it doesn't tell you that, which is odd. I don't know why that's happening, but I don't know. The Xbox is weird. Apparently, apparently, Quick Resume is super hard to develop for. Uh, like. Uh, I don't know, like some some conversations I remember having with developers. They were like, "Yeah, Quick Resume is actually a very tough feature to implement." Oh, that's interesting. Okay, yeah. hmm. my that brain would make sense. I've yeah, I've seen so many different issues and yeah. way games are dealing with it. So that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I wonder if it's just a thing because Xbox has it and Sony doesn't, and especially when they're trying to make games on PC, Xbox, PlayStation. They're just like, ah, uh, I, I don't know how we can optimize it to work on. Or it's just like, like a late thought. Like, oh, we'll get yeah. to that eventually, but we can't prioritize it for just one of the, you know, probably like what, like five different platforms they have to hit at the moment. Right. Yeah. The when it works, them. though, it's, it's like magic when it works. Oh, it's so great. It is really nice for sure. For sure. All right. Well, tell us about this other game you're playing. Uh, I ended up playing Disco Elysium Final Cut. That was one of my favorite games of 2019. Uh, I was super excited for Final Cut when that came out, played a little bit of it, and just didn't finish it. So I'm finally sitting down and trying to get through uh, Final Cut. I I don't really know what's new and what isn't. Did Did you guys play Disco Elysium at all? That's one of the ones that takes precedent over Mass Effect. I think that game is out now with Final Cut, so I'm excited to jump into it finally. Yeah, as good as Mass Effect is, if you've never played Disco Elysium, that should be definitely be a priority, especially if you it's like Mass Effect. Good. Sure. It's, it's so good. I know the voice acting is new, but I could not tell you uh, content-wise what's new in that. Yeah, there's a couple new quests, but there's so many odd quests in that game to begin with. I, I was having trouble telling which is which. I, I could, I'm sure I could look up a guide and it'll tell me. But yeah, that game, it's just so well-written. It's so... It's so off the wall, strange, interesting. I, I highly recommend it if you haven't had a chance to play it because it is it's it's something special. It's on the list. I'm I'm gonna get to it sooner or later for sure. Uh, all right, John, you didn't fill out this doc, but did you play anything? Yeah, because you didn't link me to it, and I requested linking Damn. to it, and no one did that. I linked so. you to oh. it. Okay. <laughs> when? Oh. Last time we used it. Yeah, that was when. I don't know, like three months ago, four months ago. <laughs> okay, well, I will send it. I'll put a Anyways, link in our chat. Uh, good news is I'm being sassy for no reason. I played nothing. I've been nice. busy all week recovering, so yeah. All right. Sure. Um, all right, Paul, how about you? I've been playing Subnautica Below Zero because that game is officially out. So I didn't want to touch, like the first one, didn't want to touch it until it was completely out. And uh, for this one for good reason because they completely redid the story. So I was like, well, I don't want to start something and then stop somewhere and then they cancel it or whatever. 
But that is out now. Um, it is more Subnautica to the point where it feels like maybe they should have put more and iterated more in to like a whole new game because that's like a whole new game. They could do a little bit more with it. Uh, and the stuff they did do more with was the story, which is the stuff I don't care about in Subnautica. Uh, okay. In the first game, I really, really like just kind of discovering the story and what's going on on this world and like why you're here and how to get off it and all that sort of stuff. Naturally, as you're just trying to survive, this is very much like people keep talking to me and it's annoying. I'm trying to build something here and there's just like codexes of shit going in my way. And it's kind of irritating to just have a bunch of blabbering going on. The first game is very much like you pick up audio recordings and you kind of listen to them as you're doing stuff and you're kind of piecing together like what happened here or like what happened to the crew of this ship that crashed or what happened to maybe the crew that was here before or this weird alien race. But a lot of that story is done through scanning different things in the environment and reading the journal logs of like what that stuff is. And a lot of it's fluff, uh, just kind of like world building stuff. It's all very cool. But then every now and then you would like scan an alien artifact and you would piece together a little bit of what's going on and like maybe what's happening with your character. And then like that kind of gradually grows. This is very much like people talking about the company that like might have killed your sister who knows like that's why you're on this planet is you're investigating what happened to your sister but then another story thing starts happening and then that's talking at you too and there's just so much talking at you that that like solitary feeling of you surviving on an alien planet doesn't feel impactful at all in the way it used to because there's like there's another person living on this planet for one thing at least there's probably more uh this planet's been in ha so this is the same planet as the other game uh t a few years later after it's been kind of like not colonized but the uh the kind of like shitty research uh company that was kind of being shitty in the first one is now like being shitty here and your sister worked for them and now they are charging her for negligence in her own death or whatever. Like, it's really kind of ham-fisted in there. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. That's the stuff I don't really like. On the other side, I really love Subnautica. And this is more of that. I just kind of wish it went a little bit further. There's new vehicles that you can build, um, like a sea truck. The sea truck is really dope because you can build different compartments and kind of, like, connect it like a truck with a bunch of different trailers that do different things like a fabricator that you could bring with you or just like a storage container to store more stuff and you can like mine or whatever um so there is like incremental upgrades but maybe not as much as i would like to see from a sequel necessarily like we're talking mass effect and mass effect 2 there's a g giant jump there this is more almost like just a dlc like a bigger dlc or something which is fine, just a little disappointing. It's not a bit more. That's really it. Uh, I'm curious if what do you know? How much are they charging for this? If it is a full sequel, is it like fully priced? Um, I could probably tell you. Hold on. Or is it priced kind of appropriately? Well, the thing is that these games aren't that expensive to begin with. They're like thirty bucks, maybe. Like they're very cheap. They're cheaper games. Well, whatever it is, is it, is it like the same price as the first one kind of launched at? Because yeah. then I would. Oh, yeah, okay. no, so it's not... I would say that's kind of full price for the its scope. Yeah, it's not like an add on price or anything like that. It is like a thirty dollar, maybe twenty five dollar game, something along those lines. So, yeah, I don't know. It's it's more of a game I love, so it's hard to like knock it too much for being that. It's just kind of wish you guys pushed it a little harder. And it sounds like the reason maybe why they didn't is because it had kind of an odd thing going on with it where they had like a fully fledged game and a fully fledged story and then they just like canceled it because it was an early access and the fan base said you guys could do better and they probably did for all I know because I don't know what they had before um but I kind of wish it was just a bigger game <laughs> that's really it it's still very very cool I still have like I don't know just shy of 20 hours and like two days worth of playing it because that sucks up time like nobody's business um and i'd still recommend it to anybody that likes subnautica just maybe don't have your expectations set too high for it really it that's all i've been playing okay. though. right on 
Um, other than Mass Effect this week, I finished Outriders a few hours ago. Uh, Paul, I agree with you. That game gets very bullet spongy near the end of it. I hate that end fight. Um, I like I I found it annoying at first, and then I just hated it. I was like, this has to end. <laughs> the last couple b fights, we had to knock down the world tier the difficulty. Oh, really? It was yeah. Just, it was just nonsense. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, we did. I, I think the story is still just completely ignorable in that game. But I, I, you know, I like my loot shooters, so I had a lot of fun with the with the weird powers and whatnot. Very I would cool. totally play like an expansion or some DLC. Yep set up in that game i i and it being on game pass was fantastic so that was, that was a lot of fun also this week i finished the outer wilds after jumping back and replaying that okay i really cool. liked that ending i guess in, in contrast to outer uh outriders uh the ending of outer wilds was really nice and i thought that was really good um and people should play that another game pass game so yeah. you know get on game pass for sure um I will say though the uh, the final like thing you have to do in Outer Wilds, I died like five times trying to get it done, which is was just so frustrating because because you have to reset the you have to world, reset right? it it's and another twenty three minutes or whatever. Yeah, exactly, and exactly, and like two of the no, I think I think like four out of the five times I died or whatever was because I wasn't going fast enough. But there's a specific area in the game where you cannot move fast at all. Mm. Um. And, and, I, and I'm not going to get into, like, why. So it was a lot of me just being like, can I, can I go a little bit fast? Oh, I better not. Last time I did, I died. So, so just, like, staring at the clock. Oh, God. Um, heart was was pounding for sure on that one. Um, which I guess that's a good uh, end mission for sure. Um, so, yeah, I recommend Outer Wilds. Uh, speaking of Game Pass uh, and games with uh, Wild in the name of them, uh, the Wild at Heart came out yesterday. I need to talk about this game because it's Luigi's Mansion mixed with uh, Pikmin. And it kind of just came oh. out of nowhere. Okay. Uh, I didn't really know what this game was. It has an art style that made me think it's like from Amanita Design. I got a lot of like Samorost vibes from it. Um, but you play uh, a, little a little kid named Wake who has running away from home into the forest behind his house. And there's something like he hates his dad. Something like that. The dad is not very attentive. Okay. And you come across these like forest people and specifically these little like. I think they're called like saplings, which are like the Pikmin equivalents. And just like Pikmin, you throw them at obstacles for them to like attack or to pick things up and carry them back for you or to like build a bridge. Um, the music's pretty great. The art style, I think, is is really, really nice. You know, if, if I'm comparing it to Amanita Design, who are the developers of, like, Machinarium, Sam Ross, like I mentioned, really nice hand-drawn uh, kind of cartoony aesthetic. Um, and then you also have a vacuum for whatever reason, and that, let, that lets you, um, like, suck up nuts and bolts, which are a currency. You can, there's also windmills that you can make spin with your vacuum, to open doors uh, and such stuff like that. It's it's a real weird mix of game that I was not expecting. Um but it's on Game Pass. I'm I'm kind of really liking it. The writing is like surprisingly funny. Um so if you're looking for something that's kind of not the usual thing, check out The Wild at Heart. Um I've only played about an hour and I was already like this just looks really nice. Um and you're throwing little sapling dudes at like toxic mushroom people that have spears and watching them fight and it's it's a cool little game so i recommend that game cool um but yeah with that let's run down some news that happened this week epic versus apple trials continue um and we learned so as everyone knows epic's trying to get apple to lower their cut for developers and one of the reasons Apple's not wanting to do that is because they've made a hundred million dollars off of uh, Fortnite Jeez. specifically. That is what their thirty percent cut has so far gotten to them. Um, they didn't say specifically the number because apparently that would be quote unquote inappropriate. Um, but this article I'm reading on Mac Rumors is suggesting that they've actually made close to three hundred million. So, hmm. <laughs> um, if you're wondering why Apple's fighting so hard. 
that's why that is and that's pretty crazy to think about but but they're not making any money right now because didn't they pull fortnite off of the app store correct so, correct and i guess they the, couldn't make a deal specifically with epic for that yeah it's then wow. they, they had offered and epic said no not unless you do it to everyone um oh really but, i didn't realize that yeah, Apple had said we'll we'll cut you a specific deal. Epic said not unless you offer that to every developer, uh, which I guess good guy Epic in that scenario. But either way, they're still going to win quite a bit. Um, Ep- Apple also came out and said that they had spent a million dollars in marketing for Fortnite in the last eleven months that it was on the App Store, um, which I guess is pocket change for the one hundred million. Yeah, I was going to say it sounds like nothing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, I could um, use that money, but. You know. <laughs> Yeah, sure. Share it, share it around. Um, speaking of way too much money, Grand Theft Auto Five is coming to current gen consoles on November eleventh, so for PS Five and Xbox Series. And I believe they're still working on that standalone um, Grand Theft Auto Online version. That's soonish, I think. Is that is that one of the few games to span three different console generations in terms of like? Because that was PS3, PS4, and then it'll be PS5, too. It's crazy. Yeah. They, they need crazy. a new one. I'm trying to think what else could even be up there. My, maybe Minecraft, maybe? Or Fortnite? Would be my guess. Yeah. I guess, but those games seem more like platforms. And Grand Theft Auto Online is a platform. It is. It is. But I, I guess Grand Theft Auto 5 and like doing separate releases. Sure. But I, I guess they might as well because... They make a bajillion dollars every time they release that game. I yeah, mean, I bought yeah. it on Xbox 360, Xbox One, PC, and like PlayStation 4. I'm not buying another copy of that, though. <laughs> I mean, I bet they don't really care about porting 5. They just need to get online onto yeah. the next thing. And 5 is just kind of like, well, it's there as well. It's just going to come along with this. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you can already play 5, though, right? Like, or you, you can play 5 4K. on PS5. It's true. And they got to do the updates. But instead of just doing like free updates, they're like, buy it again. Buy it again. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if anyone could do it, it's, it's Grand Theft Auto. So I think yeah, there's going to be a Grand Theft Auto 6 or just online forever. There will be a Grand Theft Auto 6. Yeah, I think so. But too. that might be the last one. I feel like then they'll just. I think there's one, one more. Up. Yeah. Well, I was, I was talking about this with a friend, right? Because Grand Theft Auto 5 online, I feel like they didn't plan for it to be as big as they as it ended up being like it's grand theft auto obviously they expected it to be huge but i don't think they expected to support it for this long i mean like 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 i feel like they had to stop supporting the 360 version pretty quickly because it just couldn't handle that because that console couldn't handle everything they were doing but i i feel like they have to do a six at this point uh and i feel like they will just build that from the ground up to be a game that people will be playing for a very very long time which sucks as someone who only really cares about story single player yeah. rockstar games yeah. i mean like i but but yeah i mean i i can go off on this for a while but like also the housers don't work there anymore they're not spearheading whatever the next projects are going to be which i don't i don't think is concerning yet you know because one person doesn't make a game it's a whole team but there's like something about the way they directed those games or you just you just feel it i, I don't know i feel like they whatever happens like whoever is in charge will not have as much much push and pull as the Housers did. So I'm curious to see what the next actual Rockstar game is going to be. Yeah, I don't even know. I feel like no matter what they come up with, it's like if it doesn't have a major online component, you're just, they're just wasting money. Yeah, yeah, so I, I don't think they'll ever release yeah. like a, a single player only game again shall see um twitch is updating some of its uh i don't even know we would say uh, not revenue share but their uh subscription tiers uh uh, across the world they are lowering what the prices are because right now the tier one subscription they're doing regional pricing in uh yeah for their subs is what they're yeah which i believe is going live today for mexico and turkey and um coming later this year uh for a number of other areas but kind of the example they give is tier one subs are roughly five dollars american sure um yeah. but when you move that around it's it's a lot it's a different price for those countries and totally so here's the here's the kind of example that they give the percentage of active users in europe or asia who support creators with a subscription is about half as much as north america people in latin america it drops to 80 percent uh lower 
Mm. Um, so in order to do that, they're going to make it so you don't have to pay exactly five dollars for a tier one. Um, which just gives the player or not the player, the viewer more options. So I guess that's good for them. And I'm sure it gives Twitch more money coming in. Now you're going from zero to at least a dollar or whatever it is. I haven't actually looked at what the new tiers are going to be, but some of those went live today. So. Oh, yeah. Uh, PS 5s control the Deuce Sense got two new colors announced. This was like, I think it happened like last at, just after our episode last week. Yeah. But a black and a red. Red's nice. I mean, those are fitting colors. They yeah. look good too. Yeah, they do. Now, if I only there were games where I don't play ever on play another black controller, I've got more than enough of those. If only that I could red, buy a console that shade of red with, is my, so nice. with my controller. That would be amazing. Sure. For whatever reason, the red controller is five bucks more than the black and the white one. Five dollar paint? Yeah, I, I guess. Yeah. Red, red's more expensive. Paint. Red's cut. Yeah, the price. Yep. Uh, I'm honestly surprised this next story didn't garner more uh, traffic and news today, but Overwatch 2 was shown somewhat briefly and talked about uh, on a Blizzard live stream. Um, they pretty much just showed off uh, some new maps. Not not any like gameplay on them, but just how they look. Okay. You know, there's a New York map, there's a Toronto map. Um, they're changing. It's no longer going to be 6 on 6 with a like breakdown of to tank to uh, support um, whatever the third one is, two of that. It's now five on five. It is, they're dropping it one tank. Um, so we'll see how that goes. But uh, I know I'm still looking forward to over Overwatch 2. I'm surprised this didn't make a bigger uh, news story, personally. I feel like that's been Overwatch's two, Overwatch 2's legacy so far is just People care and then, but not really. I don't know. I remember at BlizzCon, they like had all these Overwatch 2 announcements, but they were like sidelined to one of their other stages. They weren't in the keynote, yeah. so a bunch of people missed it. I remember covering that for GameSpot, and everyone was like, oh, we're done. It's just Overwatch panel. They're not going to say anything new. Otherwise, it was said in the keynote. And then they had all of this new stuff, and we had to scramble to cover it. Yeah, I really like Overwatch. I'm, I'm ready to like love again. Um, I, they just got to show more. They're they're like drip feeding us. Uh, and I was never into like Overwatch League, so mm -hmm. I'm yeah. just kind of waiting. Anyway, uh, oh maybe this gets you excited. Super Bomberman R. Hell I'm yeah! Get it, got a release date next Hell week. Yeah, twenty seventh. Oh, it's about fucking free time. to play. Hell no yeah. cost, free to play. Let's go. This is the one that was on Stadia, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, so yeah, May twenty seventh, PS four, Steam, Switch, uh, free to play up to sixty four players. Xbox version at a later date. Is this Bomberman Battle Royale? Yep, sixty four yep. player Battle Royale Bomberman. Oh, that, that sounds pretty cool. I had no idea this was the thing. <laughs> this was a Stadia exclusive. Yeah, one of the, one of the that'd be why you didn't. That's why yeah. I didn't. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, Hey, free to play. Like, I'll give this a try. Um, I'm I'm curious, but yeah, John, I know you've been dying to give to try this out. Yeah, I really wanted to play this, but I didn't. This I almost caved and got Stadia for this, but Man. when I saw that it was not exclusive, it was just timed exclusive. I'm like, mm, I can wait. I'll wait. I love Bomberman, but I can wait. Probably a good good thinking. Uh, speaking of the Switch. And John, I'm gonna need your help here. They announced five new games coming to their SNES and NES Switch Online collection. All right. Um, are any of these good? Uh, yeah, most of them are. Okay, so I feel like for the most part, it's usually like no one's ever heard of these games. Uh, I, most of these games, most people have probably haven't heard of. I think the one that people have heard of the most of is probably Joe and Mac. Yeah. Let's see. One uh, NES game, Ninja Jajamaru-kun, which is uh, a very popular uh, Jalico series in Japan on the Famicom, and I think a little bit on the Super Famicom. But I don't think any of the games ever came out over here except for maybe one Game Boy game. Okay. Uh, but apparently it is a very good series. This one's a little rough, maze kind of kind of game. If you've played uh, the Mappy or City Connection, they're all similar to that. At least the first one is then become more proper platformers and action RPGs later. 
Super Baseball Simulator 1000. I think this is Culture Brain. Uh, this is a baseball game with superpowers. Uh, it's all right, but there are better ones done. I think Super Baseball 2020 is the one that gives you, like, you can literally power up your uh, your players to make them catch balls in midair and stuff like that. This one's okay, but I think the next one is considered better. Uh, Caveman Ninja, also known as Joe Mac. I don't know why they're referring to it as Caveman Ninja. That's like the arcade name. The, the SNES and console name is Joe Mac. But yeah, uh, two-player arcade game by Data East. You can, uh, it's just a platforming game, but it was a pretty much a launch title or pretty close to that for the Super Nintendo. Fun but challenging game. And Magical Drop 2, puzzle game series, best known for the, uh, being on the Neo Geo. Uh, fun puzzle game where you move at the bottom of the screen, there are uh, bubbles coming towards you. You have to press a button to grab them in your hands and throw the columns into other matching columns. And you have to keep making chain reactions, stuff like that. It's a fun puzzle game, but most people remember three more fondly. And finally, Spanky's Quest. Done by the guys uh, who made Harvest Moon, Natsume. Uh, yeah. It's a weird, quirky game about a monkey named Spanky who gets trapped in a uh, maze, and he has to use the power of sports balls to defeat fruit enemies that are trying to murder him. It's just a weird platforming game. But it's fun. I like it. I used to rent that a bunch as a kid. Right this on. is... This is why Earthbound was trending earlier in the week, right? Because people yeah, yeah. were mad that were Earthbound upset. wasn't one of them. I was trying to figure out why. I, I didn't look that hard. I just saw it was Any, trending. And I was like, here we go Earthbound again. Is trending, anytime Earthbound is trending, it's because Nintendo fans are mad. That's yeah, just the rule of thumb. Yeah, pretty much. Sure. Yeah. I think I saw sure. the um, the Japanese store. They're giving uh, one of the Fire Room Emblem games. Uh, which I know I would have preferred. But... Yep. Anyway. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> all right last one another one for uh you john and, and paul uh is jupiter announced they're still working on that sega pacross s uh the mega drive heck, one heck yeah i don't know why it's been delayed for so long but heck yeah and they showed this the start screen which is, what is the, the same mark screen they showed in the past what is the mark three edition Sorry, uh, the Mark III is a uh, upgrade in between the Mega Drive and the Genesis that used uh, little like cards for the games. I, at least I think I'm thinking that correctly. It might be the way around. It might be before the Master System. But yeah, uh, I've heard of Mark III. Pretty sure that's what it's referring to is like the Mega Drive, not the Mega Drive, the Master System. Uh, if you ever saw Turbo Graphic or PC Engine cards. It, it's the equivalent of that, but for Sega. Okay. Let me make sure I'm not talking to my ass, though, because I might be confusing that with something else. Well, yeah, you no, guys no, have Master Cross to look forward to. Jake, we're big Cross fans here. Do you like Cross? I've never played it, but I've heard a lot of good things about it. I think just I don't really like puzzle games, and I didn't think it would interest me, but uh, I know my partner was playing a lot of it, and I was like, that actually looks kind of fun. Pacross is good. If you like Sudoku, you'd probably like Pacross. I feel like they're kind of similar spots in the brain. I I, I don't like Sudoku that much. Okay. So well, then, yeah, you might not like Pacross. <laughs> there you go. Uh, all right, that's going to do it for some news. Let's do some questions while John is uh, back-checking himself. Uh, if people are wanting to send in questions, they can do that by emailing topdownperspective at gmail.com at TDP podcast on Twitter, our Discord channel, or John's P.O. Box. If you send something to John's P.O. Box, we will read it no matter what. That's the rule. All right. Uh, I'll read this first one from VGC Kenny. Have you ever been told a game is good by someone, but when they were describing it, it sounded awful to you, or vice versa? I'm sure this has happened many times. I can't think of an answer though like specifically <clears throat> i bet this would have happened uh but this happened exactly when they announced uh the uh the latest hyrule warriors tying into breath of the wild mm -hmm. if oh, you had been like yeah. hey we're tying it's gonna be a side thing we're tying it into breath of the wild i, I would have been like okay okay but it's a muso game nope i'm out it lost me sure i feel like this was Death Stranding's marketing, just like in a nutshell. It was them just trying to tell us why this game is going to be good. And it was just like, yeah, but it doesn't seem fun. But then I played it and I liked it. But, you know. Yeah, that's a weird game. 
That is, that is, is a weird game. I don't weird. even know if you could like describe that game easily in like one yeah. paragraph. Like there's so many like caveats and little little weird things. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and a follow up question from VGC Kenny. 20 years from now, a movie studio is making a Sorkin or Sorkin esque court drama about the Apple and Epic case. The studio messages you and asks, hey, we'd like you to be in our movie as one of the lawyers arguing the case. You can decide which side. If you were to say yes, which team's lawyers would you play for this film? Oh, man. Mm. <laughs> what a weird question. Huh? <laughs> I think the I easy mean, answer is epic. Yeah, they kind of seem the, like the good guys here. If it's Sorkin-esque, it might be fun to play Apple because yeah. he'd, he'd, he'd write you to be a complete dick and then you could just have a lot of fun being sure. a dick on set. Well, not sure. on set, but... Yeah. I I've been reading some of the, like kind of weird quotes that people are tweeting out of the like audio bits that people are listening into. And there was oh, one from like half a week ago where they had to define what a game is. <laughs> like there was some okay. argument about, <clears throat> I think, I think either like Minecraft or Roblox came up where they're like, Roblox is the game, but the games being made inside of those, those aren't games. Those are experiences. Right. Yeah. <laughs> So I would hope some of that nonsense still makes its way in there, but being said like totally straight face. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but no, that's a good point. You being kind of the bad guys on Apple. Yeah. Um, I would watch this. I mean, I like Aaron yeah. Sorkin's writing. I would, I would watch this. Who, who would you cast though? Like actor wise, like the, the Apple lawyer and the Epic lawyer. That's a good question. Okay. You have someone off the top of your head while I'm I, thinking. I don't. I just asked nope. that question because okay. I, I saw. I recently saw what the Sorkin's trial of the Chicago Nine or whatever, and there's a lot of good yeah. actors in that. And I'm like thinking maybe some of them could work, but I also don't think any of them would work. Sure. I don't know. I haven't heard or seen any of this uh, this trial, so I like. Yeah. No yeah, we've, yeah, we've been talking about kind of the the tidbits coming out because there's a bunch of like weird backroom dealings somehow getting announced. Um, yeah, the chat's joking. Danny DeVito <laughs> play <Yeah>. both sides, <laughs> <laughs> or just have the cast of Sunny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'd, that'd be pretty good. Yeah, it's Danny DeVito versus Arnold Schwarzenegger. The, reun <laughs> the reunion you've been waiting for. I don't know. I mean, I mean, I'm a big fan of, you know, Jeff Daniels with Aaron Sorkin was great. So I could see, but that's that that's there's nothing funny about that. It's just good. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. All right. Paul, why don't you read this next one? Sure. Suku Suku writes in. How do you get over finishing a long video game? You spend so much time on it that it becomes almost unthinkable that it's not there anymore. Nothing left to do. You guys ever uh, feel like this? Yes. No. Yeah. No. Nope. Yeah. I've definitely felt like this before. It's called um, going to the next game. That's what I was gonna. I was gonna say. I'm like, I'm kind of on both sides. Part of me is like, oh, like RPGs specifically. Like, oh, I've I've like crafted these great characters, got all the best weapons. I don't want to say goodbye. The other half is like, oh, I can finally move on. I'm free. Even though I was so sick of it by the end, Death Stranding was like literally this is what I do every night for like five to ten hours is I move boxes in this video game. <laughs> this is what I do. And it like lasted for half a month. <laughs> like it was very oh long. God. It's a lot of boxes to move. In it's a lot of stuff to move. Yeah, man. The story's like the worst part of that game. It's weird. Moving boxes. Yeah. are great. <laughs> I, I agree. <laughs> I mean, I definitely. I I remember finishing The Witcher 3 and just feeling a little bit empty because yeah. I was like, ah, oh, I, I, I could have kept playing this game for another 20, 30 hours. Not that it didn't end well and not that it didn't feel satisfying, but it was just like, this is kind of like what I was doing for a month. Similar yeah. to Death Training. I was just yeah. playing Your that after work. Routine. It just this is kind of like, this is kind of like shoes. Like you wear the same pair of shoes like a year or two and they're like your little buddies and having to like throw away a pair of shoes you really like sucks yeah, yeah. 
there was a time where I remember being able to finish Picross game and having to wait for the next one. Those days are long gone, but that was always kind of weird. Just being like my like nighttime game is gone. That hasn't happened in years now, but you know, yeah, there's but, too many, too many for cross games coming out. Yeah. Yeah. It's really more just like when you get per, for a bit, persona four was this for me of just like doing a few days every like week or night or whatever. And it just, when you break the habit, like it just becomes like a habit after a while or something. Yeah. Especially the persona games. I feel like those are kind of designed to, to do that. expect more just because it's like, yeah, the game's over, but there's still like more days. I, 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 I want to hang out with these characters more. I don't want to stop. Yeah. I guess I'm a little bit like that with overcooked. Like that is just such a comfort game for me and like my buddy mm-hmm. to just like, we can play that co-op whenever. So I'm really happy that they've supported it with so much DLC over the years. So whenever there's like a new one, it's like, hell yeah, we're going to play through it. Let's get back in there. Yeah, that's that's nice. All right. Second question. As we know, Kentaro Miura has has had passed. Even if you're not an anime enthusiast, the man's work has major influence beyond that world. Many video games have undeniable homage to Berserk from Cloud's Buster Sword to Dark Souls, everything. How has uh, Mira impacted your life? Dark Souls is one of my favorite series. Like, that's the easiest one. I'm going to be honest. I, I haven't read or watched Berserk, so I did not know about this person. Yeah, Neither I would say I. Buster Sword. I'm, I yeah, like Final Fantasy VII, so I guess that's how it connects to me, but I... I am. This is out, yeah, out of my I, wheelhouse. Ironically, I was told to stay away from Berserk because of... Uh, the end of the original anime run. So I just kind of ignored it. So I feel bad because everyone's like, you should do all this stuff about Berserk. And I'm like, oh, I have no connection. People told me to stay away from it. But yeah, no, like he, people who got into Berserk apparently really love Berserk. So I, I like big swords. I guess just like dark fantasy in general, a lot of those yeah. take from him because he was one of the like pioneers in that area. Well, I play a lot of Dark Souls, so I'm probably in the same boat as you. Dark, this, Dark Souls has been noted to have basically just taken a lot of even designs of enemies right from his work. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, I should. I've also. So, I mean, I was told what happened at the end and like the quote unquote controversy of Berserk. That still seems like something I should probably check out at some time. I like saw one thing and I was like, that looks neat. I'm not going to get into anime right this anime right now though <laughs> and then moved on. Right on. John, do you want to read this next question? All right. Uh from Rasterman7. Congrats, a totally not a genie. Oh no, here we go again. <laughs> a totally not a genie entity has granted you the power to go back in time. Great, though apparently you can only use it 3 times to go as far back as 10 years. And the effect only lasts for a minute maximum. On the flip side, it also lets you choose where you want to travel back to. Of course, assuming the variables that determine the Earth's universe position at any moment it might have been taken care of correspondingly. So it, it will be accurate. Uh, if you were to use this power, when, where and when would be your destinations? And how much would your previous answer change if you only had one shot but could go as far back as 20 years and the effect lasts five minutes maximum? And not much time. I can't. I can't answer this question out loud. <laughs> oh, but I know. I know exactly when and where I would go. Okay. I cannot answer the question out loud. It's a personal affair. Well, you okay. can come but, up with uh, a secondary answer. That's fine. You have I three would, times I, I, I would for the twenty-year thing because it's it's farther than ten years back. I mean, ten so years. I'm going to take the easy. Of- like the easy thing is. Teleport to a 7-Eleven, win the lottery three times. Like, <laughs> easy money. Takes like well, one minute. It would probably have to be, you, you only have one minute, so I don't think you have enough time. To You'd have to like buy a ticket? go to you your previous do. self. Yeah, well, you, you would like put you it in You have to go to your previous self and give them the answers, right? Yeah, yeah, you'd have to figure out like what time you were in. A, like, I might have a receipt in like my car or something that showed I bought like a hot dog at a 7-Eleven at a certain time, go back to that time right in the 
same thing and just be like, take this. I don't know. <laughs> Figure it out. <laughs> one... Trying to think of yourself. Do you think um, inside of one minute you would be able to convince yourself like not to freak out and to listen to you? If I saw myself hand me something like and then I saw it was a ticket, I think I would just like assume that this is good things. <laughs> okay. <laughs> A lottery ticket handed to me by myself that looks older? Like, what could possibly go wrong? I'm trying to think. Ten I years ago, know. I think I was still... I would have been graduating high school. Uh, honestly, so like May 20th, it's probably too late to tell myself to go to a different university, but I would have loved to have done that. Okay. Got a minute to go to a different <laughs> university. Yeah. <laughs> just tell yourself <laughs> yeah that time limit's rough that's really yeah <laughs> one minute yeah yeah just imagine being on the other end of that too you just mind your own day and all of a sudden you just run into your room <laughs> and it's like listen to me you have to do this and then you just evaporate and it's like <laughs> did <I> just see? <laughs> see, so i think the 20 year but five minutes is better five because minutes at least then you can better. have an actual conversation <laughs> the problem is like 20 years I, I'm eight years old. Oh, <laughs> like right, I'm yeah. talking to an actual child. And every <laughs> five minutes, you to this evaluator something important. Point, you're right, but it doesn't have to be exactly twenty years, right? Like I don't know. I, back, I'd probably right, like right. it's like it's like the range. Like if you you trade yeah. off having two more trips to get to pick like ten to twenty years earlier. Yeah, okay, that's true. Right. I, I'd probably just go back like before I started high school and just tell myself to like doesn't fucking matter just be who you want to be do whatever the fuck you want say whatever you want who cares yeah none of it yeah. matters and or none of none of the high school stuff matters the drama and whatnot that's probably what i would have done yeah but i, I don't would, know if i, I would have listened right yeah. <laughs> yeah i'd go back to university and be like all right here's a list of who you need to be careful of here Dude. Here, here's here's the things that fuck you up in the future please please avoid these people yeah, yeah. you're gonna meet this person and just whatever you do don't meet them yeah. 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 This guy's going to sit across from you in one of your art classes. Punch him right in the face <laughs> as, as soon as you meet this guy. <laughs> yeah. Mine Bitcoin. Yeah. There's a couple Mine times Bitcoin. where I'm like, like, there's a couple times I'm like growing up, I'm like, oh, Bitcoin, that sounds interesting, but okay, whatever. No, I'm sure I'll be like, no. I mean, that's the easy one. This. Like, buy, buy Apple share. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> probably be pretty easy to like because this would have been way before like twitch and, and influencers so you could probably get on that trend real quick and become one of the top ones because you're just like hey guys minecraft's going to be huge like oh, you could be maybe the like yeah. the non-racist pewdiepie uh, <laughs> if you give yourself the right information yeah you could definitely like start trends early for sure or be on the trend early can you like bring objects with you? Could you bring like, <laughs> all right, here's here, here's a really nice camera, really nice microphone. Get started now. You're gonna have like the best quality videos for the next ten years when everyone's using their like fucking you know bullshit mics. Bad and stuff. webcam. Yeah. Download yeah. media yeah. encoder. This is you're gonna need these codecs because OBS yeah. and <laughs> shit don't exist yet. Yeah, it's funny you were you were you mentioning how, you know how many episodes the show has. I did probably eighty percent of this show with an Xbox Live Vision camera. Oh hell that yeah! I got, that I got yep. from like yeah. what it, you're in the movies or whatever it was on the yeah. 360. <laughs> so I that thing was surprisingly good, man. <laughs> All things considered, you didn't upgrade that long ago, real like in yeah, the like, span like of the show. Two or three years ago, I got an actual <laughs> oh, yeah. camera. Yeah. That thing did 720. <laughs> like, yeah, how else are you supposed to be in the movies? Yeah. True. Or, did the connect double as a webcam? Like, could you have figured that out? I'm sure you could have modded it, but I know with the vision camera, you could you could just plug it right in and it works. This is fine. USB, right? Yeah, it was just a USB thing. Um, I do, I do still have two connects somewhere, a 361 and an Xbox One. One, they're somewhere in this apartment. They're also big and and bulky. They are big, yeah. <clears throat> All right, Jake, do you want to read this next question? I will. Uh, this is from Baco. Uh, what is your biggest criticism of your favorite game? 
That's a good question. Kind of the like harder that. part here is deciding what my favorite game is going to be. Well, you, uh, yeah, yeah, just like pick one, and then you got to be able to criticize it. <laughs> John, what are you picking? What's your favorite game? I'll probably go with Ninja Gaiden and just say like it's it's too hard for new players to get used to if you're not into okay. that kind of difficulty. It's you're perfect just gonna turn for away. you. What about you, Paul? Uh, we're criticizing them as of like right now, right? Like not from when they were our favorite game. Like uh, 2021. Uh, what do you mean? Me. I mean, I'll probably pick like a Resident Evil game. I'm just wondering if it's like. Do I criticize it as if when I played it in like 97 or 2021 me? I mean, uh, if, if it's an issue of it being like old mechanics, I feel like that's kind of against the spirit of the question. OK, let me find a game then, because like it's <clears throat> old mechanics for sure for like a lot of stuff. I mean, I love Oblivion. That's one of my favorite games, but I got a long list of criticisms for that <laughs> that game. Like dungeons are boring. Uh, a lot of them don't make a lot of sense. The character models look whack. But that's, sure, you know, yeah, sure. there's a lot you could do there. So I, I usually talk about when a favorite game. I say Burnout Paradise. Oh, that game's um, excellent. I, I love Burnout Paradise. I hate the missions where you have to do like stunts. I think they're actually just called stunt missions. I've <laughs> never enjoyed those in racing games. Um, but I did every single one because I did every possible thing in that game. So. Um, one of my favorite series in general, I think the Metal Gear games are get up to up their own ass with story stuff that doesn't matter in between the stuff that is makes that series great. And I think that might just be a Kojima problem <laughs> in general. Yeah. It's <laughs> yeah. a writing style. Because like every single yeah. game he's done is like, this game is awesome. But this part that's like 15 minutes of a cutscene that doesn't matter, like that happens frequently in this 15 hour game is like over the, the top in a way that just is bothering me. I think you just don't get it. It must be that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, to, Cause to be fair, if they put out like a, a, a metal gear game without that stuff, people would be pissed. Um, I mean, maybe I don't, some people would. Kojima should focus less on wanting to make a movie in a video game and just focus on the stuff that he does well, which is hire people to make good mechanics, I guess, because I don't think he codes that stuff himself. I'm kind of just sick of him just making movies, essentially. I don't know. I, I like the nonsense he puts out. Because not everyone's putting out nonsense like that. I, 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 I guess I've got another big criticism but it's kind of dumb for one of my favorite games super smash bros ultimate i wish you could map short hopping to uh to a, a button, button because mm -hmm. instead you have to like lightly tap it or you can do it so you press both jump bu jump buttons at once and you'll do a short hop it's dumb but like it drives me absolutely insane that i just can't map a button to short hop sure yeah or map short hop to a button you i'm assuming you could just like mod a controller couldn't you yeah like, i think i think they're that? They're modded controllers and, and stuff yeah. that you can do it. But I, I, like if you want to play in tournaments, I don't think you can bring your modded controller. Although I've right. never done it, so I don't know. I'm not that good, but I'm good enough to where that really bugs me. Sure. Yeah. The yeah. Mapping... I don't know, man. You're pretty good. Like, weren't you like the best at GameSpot? Uh, well, I, I feel well. You you're pretty good too. I feel like it was like you, me, and Ben Jenka like trading off wins usually. I don't, I'm okay, but I think you won like nine out of ten times. But I will take that compliment. Thank you. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I won most of the time, but that's because I was covering it, so I was playing a lot of it. But then I remember when like you and Ben came to play, it was like, all right, now I gotta, now I gotta focus in a little bit more. See, you needed to play like high school Sean when he actually played consistently. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been a different story for sure. Because I hadn't played Smash Bros in quite a while, but I played a lot growing up. All right, this next question from Rinku. When you call a game retro, do you consider the console's age or the release date of the game? I ask because I picked up a few PS2 and GameCube games. I'm just going to pause right there. Yes, those are retro. Yep. Anyway, 100%. The other day. And it got me thinking considering the sixth generation. Oh, God. I don't even. Which one's the sixth generation? Does anyone I'm pretty know? sure it's PS2 and GameCube. Okay. Are all now past 20 years old this year? Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> Yep, it's true. <laughs> Is the 
PS2 was 2000, uh, Xbox and GameCube were 2001. Many would consider them retro, but would you consider games that came out later or late in their lifetime as retro? So yes. I guess they mean like with like FIFA coming out like eight years after the the PS2 oh. stopping. <laughs> Is that specific version <laughs> retro? <laughs> <laughs> or like the copy right. of Just Dance that came out for the Wii last year or whatever it was. Is that game retro? I feel like there may be some edge cases, but like one or two games like would skirt that. I think I would still call them retro if I saw the Wii logo on the box. Maybe maybe at first glance, yeah. Yeah, yeah. maybe. Yeah, the, P- the PS2 was getting games till when? Like 2010? That Something like absurd, that. 2012? Yeah. I want to say after 2010, yeah, probably. My, yeah, my cop is like, like, like anything my, behind 15 years is like, yeah, no, that's that's fucking retro. Like, yeah, I agree. I guess I will say though, when I think of like Wind Waker, it doesn't seem that retro to me. While like the console does and a bunch of other GameCube games, I don't know why. Maybe just because that's a game that I remember so well, or maybe it's because they re-released it kind of a long time ago. That too, one also actually. like the art style is doing a lot. To yeah, help it not seem as old. I think um, that helps. And it's like Nintendo, you know, that, that <clears throat> formula is pretty tried and true. <clears throat> yeah. FIFA 14 was the last PS2 game. So 2013. The so wow. 2013 would have been the last PS2 one then. That that I would probably make an edge case for because that's eight years. But like most everything else on PS2, I would consider retro because it's we're talking 15 plus. Yeah, so I guess I guess that's kind of the thing is like, what's the the year date where something is retro at this point? If we're if we're arguing, well, semantics. The, the original rule of thumb was two generations back is retro. OK, so N64 like at N64 NES was retro at GameCube. Super Nintendo was retro, et cetera, et cetera. Just back, so right back now, then thing. PS3 era is retro. I would feel like, yeah, Xbox 360 and PS3 is creeping into retro right now because that's 15 years. Yeah, it's definitely so that was petering. 2005 for the Xbox 360. Yeah. Damn. Weird. Yeah. That is weird to think about because you grow up with like a sense of what is retro. And and then, yeah, like the 360 thinking of that as retro. Like, I remember that when that was like the shit. Yeah. All right, Paul, last question is yours. All right. Dedinsky, at what point in a console's lifespan do you purchase your fourth controller? <laughs> <laughs> when they add enough cool colors yeah pretty much <laughs> cool <color. clears throat> do you guys consistently get four controllers for your consoles over the lifespan i haven't since the ps3 and xbox 360 era yeah i feel like 360 was the last time i had four and do you think that has anything to do with like your age yeah friends coming over going over to friends house yep. friends That's coming over is. is what dictates it yeah like PS, I think out of like the last like ten consoles or something, I think PS3 might be the only one I didn't get four controllers for. PS3, I definitely don't. I'm trying to think like GameCube. GameCube, I definitely did, but that was kind of like my big friends coming over. We're all playing Smash Forever game. Probably did N64. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I guess with Nintendo consoles, usually it's Smash Bros. That's why I get. Like Smash yeah. Brothers or or sometimes Mario Kart, depending on when I pick yeah. it up. Like with the Switch, I, I I mean that came with two as is, and then I got a Pro controller and I got another Pro controller for Smash Bros. So I had four ish, sure, you know, somewhat early. But like, and it, and Nintendo does like limited colors and limited designs, so yeah. it's like, oh, I want to get this because I like this color. It's well, I mean, they all do. There's a new Dual Sense and the five dollars extra for your red one. Yeah, exactly. Sure. I will say, though, there was definitely like a gap where I didn't because I didn't need them. But then at the Xbox one, I somehow ended up with a bunch of those controllers. And I think it was because I hit a point in my life where I had more like a good deal of money where I could buy the colors I really wanted as opposed to being younger and just being or in college and being like, this thing still works. I don't need the cool color one. I'm going to use this black one forever. Did you ever like customize your Xbox one controller? I remember wanting to do that, but never. Got around I've got never... two of those. Oh, oh really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you mean like the the official customized the, the design yeah. lab? Oh, yeah, like here's yeah, like my wife gave me a awesome. Waluigi one with a little engraving on the bottom. <laughs> you can barely see it. And I've got a Canadian red and silver and white one. That's pretty cool. 
I feel like I'd have like a like I'd be frozen with what do I do? Which one? How should I make it cool? That that's why I didn't get one because it was yeah. just like I like made like three or four different ones I liked and I was like, but I don't know which one. Yeah, I do have the launch Xbox one that has day one 2013 and I really like I used to that. have that. Yeah, yeah. that's I think that one's pretty cool to still have. Um, but yeah. All right, that's going to do it for questions. Again, if you want to send in questions for next week, it's topdownperspective at gmail.com, at TDP Podcast on Twitter, the Discord channel, or John's P.O. Box. Game of the week. Jake, you have to pick a game you played this week that you is your game of the week. Oh, man. I mean, probably Mass Effect 2. Okay. I, I, that's like all I've played, Mass Effect sure. 1, 2. Yep. And Mine's also easy. going to be Mass Effect. Subnautica. The cross. Yeah. <laughs> Right on. Um, all right, a little bit of updates on it. I'm going to be gone for the next two episodes, so it'll just be John and Paul. Uh, as such, our uh, Patreon episode about the original Shantae is getting pushed back until I return, so that'll be coming mid-June. Right now, you can vote on what July's game is going to be, so if you're a patron, go vote. Um, and last, Jakes, thank you so much for joining us this week. Yeah, Thank you guys for having me. Feel free to plug anything you want. Uh, oh, I, uh, I started a new podcast with a friend called The Nuclear Fridge. Uh, it's not a game podcast. We do talk about games, but we just talk about movies, TV shows, kind of just whatever we feel like. So if that seems interesting, check it out. Nuclear Fridge. The first episode goes up Friday. Uh, since we're right at the very beginning. Other than that, though, that's all I got. <laughs> all right. Oh, yes. Thanks. I hope... Uh... Hope this was a good time. I, I'm super glad you came on. We'll have to do this again in the future. Yeah, me too. Um, but yeah, other than that, uh, thanks everyone for listening. I'll see you guys in three weeks. Bye. Everybody. See y'all.